you if you report anything they don't want to hear about. How do you figure? So retaliation, it is a big thing in the VA, and um, it's it's it, it's deep. It, not in just the people, but in management. So I agree, there's ret uh, retaliation, but there are checks and balances that you can use for that retaliation. To look at that and get around that um, when you're trying to have a voice as a like, do you think? Employees that work in a large organization, in this case for the you know veterans hospital uh, or military hospitals, should should we have a voice? We should have a voice because that's the only way change occurs. But with that voice, we pretty much have to keep it anonymous or find anonymous avenues to prevent being retaliated against. Mm -hmm. So I agree, we should have a voice, and I'm not certain on what organization he works for. Uh, my, orga my organization is different than his organization, um, but I do agree that we should have a voice. But when we, uh, they, the VA says we have a voice, it is it is through the uh, you know open door policy or um, what's that called a uh, whistleblower um, protection? But not only that, we also have a voice with the union. But even that is not good enough because I think the union is also tied with management. And they kind of go hand in hand together. I see a lot of times that the union and the management agree on things that the, that we as the, the people don't agree on. And don't, we don't see the eye, eye to eye. And so I think the union, the whistleblower, all these protections that we have as our voice um, are good. But I think that there should be another uh, avenue. Instead of having the union, we should have a third party advocate for us, the people, against management. A third-party uh, advocate that is not part of the VA, that is a um, checks and balance for the VA. There are things that need to come out. I mean, it's, you just can't turn your head to some of the situations that go on. Yeah. Because I don't want to be a part of something happening to a veteran. Yeah. And that's, that's against everything, the reason I'm even there. Yeah. I'm there to take care of the veteran. And when you don't see that happening... You start getting disillusioned in your job. Mm -hmm. Is that, um, how do you go home or are you stressed when you go home sometime and how do you de-stress to not let things like that bother you? There are times when I do go home I'm very angry mm -hmm. about some of the things that have occurred at work and the lack of accountability. Mm -hmm. um, because he, he's angry because he, he stresses his value um, on his quality towards the veterans he's passionate and everyone is that way um they're passionate and what they want to do and when they don't see it going the right way it, it, it can anger people and I, I i see that and i agree with him i try not to, to uh take it home with me but it's there because i, I, can, I can see it when i snap at my daughter mm -hmm. Once I and then the thing is is and i've learned this in the military nothing is personal everything is business but sometimes things are personal, and but yet you have to sort of like go out of yourself and rationalize and think about the things that are happening to you. And you can't take it, you can't let some jerk or idiot control your emotions. So, yeah, I, it's happened to me, and I've had my emotions twisted. But I also come to the point where, you know, I don't try to take it home, and I don't uh, try to continue on the next day and and compound it. So I try to uh, either resolve the problem or just let the problem go because sometimes you can't fix everything. You got to choose your battles. Which I sometimes do. Mm -hmm. But a lot of the time I talk with her about the things that have gone on so I don't end up snapping at her. Mm -hmm. And when he says talk and communicate, that's, that's a very important thing. As not only as uh, federal employees or as a... Uh, you know, people in the workforce. Communication is key to everything, um, to relieving your stress, relieving your anger, and et cetera, et cetera. So communication is key. But it's definitely there. I mean, it's just about every day. Mm -hmm. um, do you, what are some things that you would recommend uh, to, you know, ease the thoughts of those that think they don't have a voice and, um, some things to radically accept that 
things, or should we radically accept that things are the way they are, and we need, mm, I know you're totally against, uh, like I am sometimes, too, uh, turning a blind eye, you know. I'm 100% against a lack of accountability. Mm -hmm. There's no reason for it. Mm -hmm. You're getting there or being paid taxpayer money to do a job. Do your job so that the employees that are stuck in the middle between you and that veteran don't have to take the brunt of your lack of doing your job, which we take every day. Mm -hmm. it's, it's not fair to us. What are some solutions that you think, um, you know, those that are willing to step up and help make change, what are some solutions to that, you think? One of the biggest solutions is getting somebody in charge of the hospital that will hold people accountable. Another thing is the solution is getting holding people accountable and not promoting people that are the bad people to higher positions. I see this a lot. The people that get in trouble or the people that are, are always um, the, a negative side to the organization, they seem to get promoted a lot in, in the organization to higher levels of, of management. And so when you do that, it's you're adding more toxicity to the management and then you're not resolving the problem. The problem is they need to get rid of these people and, and not make and, and make it make it difficult for the bad employees to remain employed that's the problem we're still hiring bad employees and what we should do is get rid of the bad employees and and re and hold people accountable like you said so yeah i see this a lot um we need to hold people accountable management needs to step up and even even if it's a uh, part of the management problem someone needs to uh step up and you know clean this lake uh clean and get rid of these toxic uh managers for accountability. And is that for uh, regular employees as well as supervisors and managers? Yes, that is for every step of the chain. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So, yes, I agree. Across the board, from Joe Smeagle to Eagle Smeagle. It, it doesn't matter who you are. Uh, you need to be held accountable for your actions. You need to help held accountable for what you do. And if, if the management um, holds a... Uh, uh, maintains a toxic relationship with their employees and they see yeah it just people need to be held accountable from the bottom to the top level from top to bottom hold them accountable for not meeting priorities that you need to make mm -hmm. well i thank you so much ed um i know we're just getting off of work at midnight and um it this i really am grateful and thank you uh it's angry. It's very, it makes me incredibly angry mm -hmm. to know that people don't follow the proper procedure. And, in and I think he's talking about the proper procedure in his organization, so I'm not certain what he's talking about, but um, he's frustrated. You can tell. The result of that, like yesterday, I don't want to see. And, and some of this video gets jumped around because uh, um, Emily has jumped around and removed some uh, content that was probably uh, too much information. So I agree. I understand. I don't want to be a part of it. Mm -hmm. You still have an obligation to follow the procedure and do what you're supposed to. Mm. So well, I'm thinking we can get in trouble as government employees by talking about things. All right, well, we can be held accountable. We can get in trouble. Else. We can get in trouble for talking about these things, but honestly, you can't get in trouble for talking about the truth and the facts because you're protected under the Whistleblower Act. And so they can't, uh, they can't do any, do anything against you. And that, and that right there is, is a third party organization. It's not within the VA, so you're protected. Don't worry. Like not doing their job. Mm -hmm. well, so, hmm. you caught me. <laughs> you caught me on guard. Yeah. <laughs> but you're telling the truth. You're telling the truth. I know. I know. This is the way I observe it. Mm -hmm. We have a set of guidelines. Mm -hmm. Those guidelines are there. Just like when I worked for American Airlines, those guidelines are there to protect the veteran and to protect the employee, mm -hmm. so that these things don't occur. Mm -hmm. When you have a failure of those guidelines, then you have a, a failure of people accomplishing what needs to be done, and someone ends up paying a price for that. Mm -hmm. The last thing I want to see is a veteran paying a price because someone didn't follow the procedure. It's really not going to do much. Stop it before it occurs. Mm -hmm. I think it's time about it. How? By holding people accountable to follow the procedure and do the training they're required to do. Mm -hmm. Now, if we can't control that, right? Up to a certain extent, you, you can have your voice. There are anonymous phone calls you can have. I meant to give you a phone number today. But um, there are anonymous uh, phone call uh, phone numbers that you can report um, when you 